the history uh, of uh, drainage uh, prior to 1965, drainage was handled uh, through the uh, court system. If you wanted to get something done, you either went through the circuit court system or you went through the commissioner's court and went through the hearings to either build or reconstruct a drain. Uh, that was working well until we had more populace uh, out throughout the watersheds. And in the early 60s, the Indiana legislature realized that with the court systems having all the uh, things that they needed to take care of, we needed to look at a different route to be able to handle uh, these situations. Uh, so the 1965, the Indiana legislature uh, enacted the drainage code, and that's what we live by today. It's been uh, revised, obviously, many times uh, since that period. But it's still been a very good working document that allows the drainage board, which is made up of the three commissioners and myself as the ex officio member to advise them, uh, which allows us to be able to uh, create new drains, uh, do periodic maintenance on the 900 miles of regulated drains that we have. And then when drains get to the point where they're no longer able to function with periodic maintenance, then we can go through a procedure called reconstruction. And that is the pond ordinance. We were finding throughout the county that ponds were either getting uh, uh, constructed too close to road right-of-ways, too close to property lines, uh, were uh, discharging uh, inappropriately onto other properties. Uh, so now in order to build a pond, you've got to submit a plan and then there's a uh, pretty nominal uh, small fee uh, for uh, that permit. You know, GPS is really good. I'm glad that we have it. Uh, we have a base station just outside of my office here that is used not only for the county, but all of the private uh, surveyors were part of an, the uh, in-course out of Indianapolis, handled through the Department of Transportation. Uh, but the bottom line, when you're looking for section corners, uh, as I learned many years ago when I was going through college, one of the main things is following the step, footsteps of the original surveyor. Can you comment, you mentioned a little earlier West Lakes, and just from a, it doesn't involve me personally, but it just seems from a distance that things uh, are getting almost worse in that area from a flooding standpoint than they were. I think that it is my opinion that the DNR uh, could do more to remove uh, woody vegetation, dead woody vegetation that has fallen in the rivers. Uh, I have personally uh, put together layer grants for this in the past uh, and have been successful on that a little bit. Uh, but I, it's because of that that now we have a lot of sediment between Cosperville and uh, the uh, outlet of the West Lakes at Duke's Bridge. Just a minute and, uh, and tell you all about the idea that Randy has been instrumental in uh, helping us with Noble Trails. He's done a lot of uh, a lot of gratis work for us, so he's been uh, he's been there when we needed him. And uh, I think that most uh, pretty much all he's gotten so far is like a hat. But uh, but I think that uh, we'll we'll get him a, a name on uh, a, a bench pretty soon along the trail and. And uh, we just, uh, I, he's been very, very generous. And I know that he has other things to do as he's outlined already, and yet he's been helpful to us. And so, um, so I wanna put in a, a plug for 
Uh, what a great guy Randy is. If you're going to be in a family gathering, which I would assume the Rotary Club would be, that each family brings their own food and eats their own food. So at this inaugural, will we be bringing our own food to eat? We could cook steaks over grill. We could fry chicken or make chicken or have it delivered. Or we could have somebody come in with something where you could sit in your own chair and eat it. And this is my suggestion. We haven't fully discussed it yet. But if we had pulled pork from, um, I can't see this very easily, um, shakes and pits. There you go. Is that right? Anyway, if you know, you could sit in your own chair and eat dinner without having to have a table in front of you. So there's some distancing and we'll be fine. What we don't want to do is have everybody touch the same implements and uh, or um, that sort of thing, um, you know, that is serving serving spoons and things like that. But as as long as we can avoid that and uh, and be able to keep our distance, be outside. It, the the truth is that the um, the the thinking at this time is that uh, very little of the transmission is done by uh, direct contact, and much more of it is by respiratory and um, and even aerosol. Um, and and when you're outside, um, you, you minimize that. But we don't want to. We we don't want any exposure that we don't absolutely have to have. One person that absolutely hates the Zoom meetings. Most people really tolerate them or like them pretty well. Um, there may be a place for them, but there was an overwhelming sense of being back to live in-person meetings ultimately is our goal. But there's a place for them and they work well and our attendance has been uh, actually surprisingly good. I caught, I caught a putty tap a tweepin' upon me. I did, I caught a putty tap as plain as he could be. <laughs> 38. I turned 38 yesterday. Gambling is going on in here. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Everybody out at once.